What's going on perfumery people? Uh, so in today's video, I thought it would be pretty neat to evaluate a full perfume formula and then make a few tweaks so one can learn uh, their materials essentially. So what I did was uh, I scoured the internet for some, you know, public demo or demonstration formulas from these big fragrance houses from like uh, Givaudan, IFF. Um, and then I came across one from, I believe it was from Simrise. And it was a relatively short, full perfume formula. And it was, it was a men's, like a, a typical summertime kind of aquatic, uh, oceanic, uh, you know, men's freshy kind of formula. So... I liked it because the material list was really short, but what we're going to do, we're going to go through the formula, identify in the formula what are some of the key components that make this perfume sit in this theme of the, you know, men's fresh, aquatic, ozonic kind of uh, aromatic. and. Then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the formula and take a look at not only what are the key ingredients that you probably need to have in this, we'll, lay, we'll take a look at some of the smaller uh, non-essential ingredients or materials that you can play around with and swap with other materials to get different effects. Uh, maybe take this uh, formula into a new direction or just kind of uh, finesse it into something completely different uh, but still within that same intended theme which is the men's summertime aquatic so what i'll do is i'll on the uh the screen i'll post the the full original formula up above and i'll go through the list of the ingredients briefly um, and then we'll identify you know what are some of the main groups in this and what are their roles and function so i have my cheat sheet here while you guys are looking up at the screen so the first material, uh, Ambroxan, which is a, a very important note for a lot of modern uh, men's, specifically uh, trendy, fresh perfumes. So uh, I would say it's a key ingredient, but it's something we're going to play with in a little bit. Um, so the next few materials, you've got your uh, dehydro uh, mercicinol, linal, uh, linalol, and linalol acetate. So to me, these three are more of your fresh aromatics. So your dehydromercicinol is your typical, it's slightly lavender uh, aromatic with a, a tinge of like a citrusy kind of leaning towards, you know, bergamot kind of thing. So I classify that as like more of an aromatic because it has that uh, lavender uh, facet to it. Linalol and linalol acetate, however, can be a lot of different things. It's found primarily naturally in a lot of florals. It's found naturally in a lot of citruses. So it could mean a lot of things, but in this formula, the way that I'm looking at it, I bet you they're probably leaning more towards, they're using these two to support the, the dehydromercicinol's kind of lavenderish feel, because if you look at lavender, like the lavender essential oil, the two main key materials that make up of the essential oil is linalol and you know linalol acetates so i have a funny feeling they're using that to support though that material um, the next two materials below that you've got your standard bergamot essential oil and your lemon cold pressed essential oil and that's primarily your citruses so that's going to be your your crisp citrus opening and then the, the slew of, uh, of the next few uh, materials are primarily all florals. So geraniol, which is a geranium type scent, but it's very faint and very light. So in this formula, they're keeping it very, very low. Uh, hedione, which is pretty much a must in a lot of modern day trendy perfumes. They go pretty heavy in this formula, about 21%. Uh, but hedione is very light, transparent. Uh, so you don't necessarily get a jasmine-like note just from Hedione alone. But in this, they're using it to support some of the other florals. Uh, next, you've got uh, Damascenone, uh, which is more of like, it's a, multi a multifaceted material, which is primarily rosy with facets of fruit uh, and maybe a, a tinge of spiciness. And we'll talk more about this material in a little bit. 
your cis jasmine which is primarily a very strong material that is definitely a jasmine like scent but in this formula they kept it very 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 low and then of course you've got lilio which is your uh, mugwe lily of the valley type scent uh, they're using a, a decent dose amount about you know 5.4 percent now the next few materials on this list you'll look at are primarily green smelling materials. Now you've got Galbex, which is primarily a green odorous with a, a fruity kind of facet to it. So it's kind of green, it's primarily green with a slight fruitiness. Uh, Galbex I believe is a green with a little bit of almost like a sparkly pineapple kind of facet to it. Uh, under, next one you've got Cis3 Hexanol, which is pretty much like a grassy odor. Uh, then you've got your Cis3 Hexanol Salicylate, now that one is a it's a workhorse material for me because it's multifaceted in a sense where it is definitely shaded in the green side but to me because it's a, a salicylate it leans very heavily floral so think of a very transparent faint floral like substance that has a shade of greenness to it so in this formula the original formula we're looking at they have it at 4.3 percent which is a lot but the primary uh, floral scent that you're probably going to get from this formula is from that Cis3 Hexanol Salicylate. Uh, the next three materials are, are going to be your musks. Uh, you've got a very, very low dosage of uh, Cashmeran. Uh, you've got Embretolide at uh, about roughly 2.2%. Uh, Embretolide is more of a sweeter type of musk, and it's more of the ones that people can smell it very easily even at low doses uh, so they keep it this looks like a good ratio in this formula and then the other musk is your ethylene brassylate which is a very typical what they call a clean white musk uh, which some people can smell some people can't a lot of people have a hard time smelling clean white musk uh, ethylene brassylate i would say is one of those clean white musks that more people than not would be able to smell this and it does have a clean white musk feel with a subtle, subtle hint of fruitiness in it, but it's very subtle, primarily just a, your basic generic clean white musk, much like Galaxolide, essentially. Uh, then your next couple materials, you've got uh, what I call the ozone materials. You've got your, your calone, uh, floral ozone, and then helianol. Now, helianol, to me, is a more easy breezy material for ozone uh, materials. You can go a little bit more heavy handed with helinol than you could with calone or floral, uh, floral ozone. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, next one is a, a spicy, just a single spice material. Uh, the original formula called for pink peppercorn, but we'll play around with that in a little bit. So we'll talk more later. Uh, the next material is just your standard vanillin for something a little bit, very subtle shades of sweetness in the base. And then the last materials are going to be your woods. So because this is a men's fresh, you know, aquatic, uh, aromatic, and it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lie heavily on the woods, which in this formula it looks like they do. So you've got your Bactanol at about roughly a little over 1%, and that's going to be your sandalwood note. You've got vetiver oil, uh, roughly 1.6%. Then you've got Isoe Super, which to me isn't really a woody note per se, but it does support the woodiness of the overall perfume. It makes a good filler, in my opinion, the Isoe Super. So in this formula, they're almost at 11% Isoe Super. Um, then you've got your Sed Ramber, uh, which is at 2.2%. And Sed Ramber to me is a super, super awesome material because it has this ambergris like sweetness so that's where you get that kind of marine ambery ambergris mixed with cedar wood and it's a great it's a great standalone material or it's a great material to help support other woods depending on what your perfume theme is in this formula it works really really well because of the theme being the you know woody aquatic men's summer freshie uh, so the Sedramber in this original formula was at 2.2%. And then the last material is vetiver acetate, which is just a more refined vetiver. 
Uh, if you actually look at vetiver essential oil, probably 60, 65% of vetiver essential oil is made of vetiver acetate. It's just a cleaner, more refined version of it. So you can tell the original formula that we're looking at here called for just a little bit of vetiver acetate because it has a slight sweetness to the vetiver and that goes well with the original vetiver essential oil. Now, so let's point out some of the the key materials in this formula that you need to identify that fit this theme and make this perfume the theme that it is, which is the men's, you know, summertime, freshy, aquatic, aromatic. So looking at this list up here, I can tell you right now, the three aromatic materials, your, you know, dihydromersicinol, linalool, and linalool acetate are your must-haves. Um, going down into the citrus areas these are some you can play with which we'll talk a little bit uh, a little bit more uh, going into the florals i would say some of these you can play with some of these are non-essential we'll talk a little bit more about that because in this perfume formula it's not relying heavily on anything floral per se so a lot of these florals we can change up but i believe the hedione percentage we're going to keep the same um, now looking at the, the, the next of the, uh, the green materials, these ones we can totally play with and we can swap them out with other different green materials. The only one that I would not touch in this formula is the cis 3 hexanol salicylate because it has that floral green facet to it, mostly floral, but a, a, a shade of green. That one, because the original formula called for almost 4.3% of it in the formula, is pretty much nailed and locked into this, and it's helping identify into this theme. So I would not change that cis 3 hexanol uh, salicylate at all. Looking at the musks, the musks we're definitely going to play with. Um, and then the ozones we can also play with, the uh, calone uh, and floral floral ozone we can play with. The one that I wouldn't touch is the helionol. Uh, heli uh, I think helionol on, in this formula is a supporting major key player in this, so we're not gonna touch that. Uh, your spicy, you know, the pink peppercorn we're looking at up here, we can totally play with that. Vanillin, we can play with that. Now, when you get to the woods, I would say the ones that we don't wanna touch is the ISOE Super and the said ramber those are the two important uh woody you know materials in this formula that help it fit the theme the ones that i think we can play around with definitely the bactanol i would say keep the vetiver um just because vetiver fits so well in men's in men's uh themed perfumes but the the bactanol we can play with so now that we've identified some, you know, what are the, the keepers, what are the key ingredients that make this formula what it is in that themed style, and then we've identified some of the not so important materials that we could actually play with and take it not necessarily into different directions, but you can make this now uniquely your own and give it different facets, different, uh, just different shades to the, to the fragrance. So what you're gonna wanna do first, uh, first and foremost, you're gonna wanna make this formula as is, the original one. And what you'll probably want to do is, once you create this formula, you know, um, whether you're using pre-diluted materials, if you're using, you know, fully undiluted raw neat materials, you know, you'll obviously want to dilute it down to like say, you know, a 10% EDT concentration and fill up one of these spray vials. Hopefully uh, you should have plenty, plenty of these by now if you're into perfumery and you're, you know, months, years into it, into down your perfumery journey road, you probably already have plenty of these to go around. Uh, make up this formula as is the intended original formula fill up one of these little 5 ml bottles as much as you can as much as you can get because you're going to use this now as what's called a baseline so as you make tweaks uh, to this formula in different variations and different versions you could always smell and compare to the original formula to see what your tweak did if it was an improvement or if it was a failure so you're going to definitely make one of these fill it up now, let's talk about some of the materials that you can play around with to make some different 
shades, uh, different uh, uniqueness, uh, maybe take things in a little bit different direction. So looking up at this list above, I can tell you right now the Embroxin, the original formula called for about roughly 1.6% Embroxin. Now we know the huge trend in the past 10 years in modern men's colognes is Embroxin. Everyone's talking about the Embroxin bomb. It's like, oh my God, it's in Dior Sauvage, Blue de Chanel, Versace Dylan Blue. It's in this, it's in that, and Creed Aventus. And usually their Embroxin can go up to seven to 10% Embroxin. So I would say make another trial batch exactly as is, but take that Embroxin from 1.6 and amp it up to 5%. Mix it up, make a separate trial and call it trial you know, number two, set it aside. Now try a, another one. And so looking at this list, I already said, we're not gonna touch the, the aromatics, the linalol, the linalol acetate, the hydromacisinol, we're not gonna touch that. Now play around with the citruses. I would say if you smell the original formula, you're gonna smell the lemon is very forward in this. It's more dominant than the bergamot essential oil and looking at the formula, it is. They've got about 6.5% lemon uh, and only 2.2% bergamot. So keep the bergamot exactly as is. But in this second trial, do it with a different citrus completely. Take that citrus and swap it out with say grapefruit cold pressed essential oil or swap it out with sweet orange cold pressed essential oil make you know make that up make another batch call that batch number three now when you get into the florals this is where it can get interesting because the original formula is not really a floral heavy perfume there's really not much of a floralcy to it uh, there's no you know easily detectable like oh I smell rose I smell jasmine I smell this you, you can't really detect any sort of floralcy so this is where you can have fun with it. You'll keep your hedione at the 21.6%, the intended, uh, intended hedione. Uh, keep your damascenone. Uh, actually, you could play with this because most people don't have damascenone. You can swap it out with uh, damascone alpha or maybe try it with damascone delta. Try different uh, damascones and see what that does. But what I'm looking at here is this Liliol at 5.4%. And this is where you can have fun with it. Liliol is a, not to say soon to be banned. It sounds to me like they're working to ban this material. It's already banned in some countries, not in the US yet, but it's primarily a Lily of the Valley white floral material. Very, I don't wanna say faint, but it's very soft, it's very delicate, and it's never intrusive or in your face. So in this one, you could swap the Liliol and play with some other materials. So if you're, you're probably thinking, well, what, what do I swap it with? Well, you can start by trying with just generic, well, not to say generic, but just good old fashioned, um, like geranium essential oil. Since the original formula already called for some geraniol, which is a synthetic geranium-like scent in a very small amount, See what happens if you replace the Liliol that was at 5.4%, but only add in 1% of geranium essential oil and see what that does to the blend. And then make that batch, set it aside, call it batch number four. So now you can see the theme here, what we're kind of doing is you have the original, you know, your, your original unmodified, the, you know, the main batch, the, the original. And you're gonna make many different variations testing certain aspects of the perfume and seeing what kind of results you get. Some may be favorable, some maybe not. And it may take the perfume in a completely different direction, which is what was not intended for this style or theme of fragrance. So I would say swap the Liliol, that's at 5.4, and only do 1% you know, geranium essential oil, see what that does. And then don't stop there. Try different, uh, different florals. Swap that lily all again with something else. Try a different lily of the valley material. You can try uh, something like, uh, 
where is this? We've got like a uh, Mugantanol uh, by Simrise, which is another Lily of the Valley material that isn't being banned. So you can try and swap it with that and see how it works versus the original Liliol. Try it with a uh, Myol, which is another Lily of the Valley material. Try it with, um, what do we got? Uh, Hivernal Neo is another strong, strong material. You'll want to use this in a very low dose, probably way under 1%. Um, you can try it with Lyrol. You can try it with, you know, Fluorhydrol is another Lily of the Valley material. But don't stop there with just staying with the Lily of the Valley materials. Because if you stick within the Lily of the Valley materials, you'll pretty much still stay in the ballpark of what the original formula intended. But because you're using different Lily of the Valley materials, you're now slightly gonna get very, very different subtle facets of what that new material could be. Um, but feel free to try anything. Try Orange Blossom at 1%. Uh, try, try anything, Rose Absolute. You can just have fun with the florals. Um, so, now looking more at this list, some of the green materials, we can definitely, definitely change up and see what unique effects we can get. But I would strongly say the Cis 3 Hexanol Salicylate, do not touch it. Keep that in the formula as intended at 4.3%. But you can probably switch out Lifarome, which is only at uh, you know one part per thousand. Lifarome is super, super strong, but you can try and switch it out with Triplol which is another green grassy material and see what kind of effect that gives to the to the perfume. You can try, uh, let's see, you can try something as simple as Violet Leaf Absolute. Try that at one part per thousand and replace Lifarum with that. See what kind of, you know, effect that gives because now it's green, but now Violet Leaf Absolute has a slight fresh undertone of fruitiness to it. So see what that does. Uh, looking at Galbex, which is a green material with a fruity undertone as well, you can switch out Galbex, which is only at, it's under 1%, it's at half of a percent in the formula. Switch it out with something like Violif from IFF, which is another green material, but it has a fruity banana undertone instead of Galbex, which is a green material with a pineapple undertone. So you can see what, I, you can see what I'm doing by switching out certain materials and then every time you make a, a switch, make another batch, label it, you know, test A or test one, test one, two, test three, and make notes of every change that you did in the test. And always refer back to your baseline original scent. So you can compare what is, you know, test number six smell like compared to the baseline scent. And all I did was switch out, you know, Galbax with Violet. What is, does that, does that provide anything interesting or does, or is it an equal swap that really doesn't change much? Um, so now looking at some of these other things on the list, in the musks, I would say Cashmeran, you could probably just omit that, to be honest. Um, it does add an interesting texture, but because it's in such a small amount, one part per thousand, you're not gonna necessarily smell Cashmeran in this. You're gonna just feel the texture of Cashmeran. So, probably keep it in there at one part per thousand or just omit it completely if you don't have it. Um, looking at Embretolide, that one I would keep. Embretolide is a, a stronger smelling musk, which was probably intended to be that way in this perfume. So don't touch the Embretolide. What you will want to play with is the Ethylene Brassily. Because it's a generic white musk, now you could have fun with it and be like, well, Ethylene Brassylate is at 6.5% in this formula. Let's swap out in equal amounts with just regular old Galaxolide. What does that do to the formula? Swap it out with something like Habanolide, another clean white musk with a little bit more of the, what they call hot iron linen effect, which is if anyone's like, well, what does that smell like? It smells like if you're ironing your clothes, and if you leave your iron on that shirt for too long, you smell the heat coming off the, the clothing. And that's what kind of Habanolite gives off a little bit. So swap out ethylene brassolate in equal amounts for Habanolite. See what that does. Try Romandolide, which is another 
you know, clean white musk that leans more heavier on the fruity side. So that ethylene brassylate at 6.5%, you could go nuts and have fun with testing different variations of musk. Because now for somebody that's like, I have all these different musks, but I don't know what they're used for. What are some of the best uses for these? This is a perfect scenario to test your musk because you're swapping out one musk in equal amounts for a completely different musk. And now you can smell and all these different variations that you're going to be doing. You can smell, well, this one has the ethylene bracelet. This trial had, uh, you know, habanolide in its place. This one had uh, edenolide in its place, you know, and you can smell the differences. Sometimes you will smell a difference, sometimes you won't. And then you'll make a mental note of what works and what doesn't. Uh, looking more down the list, Calone for your ozone material, you can swap that out with so many different things. Like there is, I mean, you've got Calone, you've got Cascalone, which is the new updated version of it. You have like Ultrazer, God, there's like five or six different ones off the top. I just can't think of any, but there's so many different uh, materials. Actually, let me just grab something real quick. Just looking at some suitable replacements for Calone. Ultrazer, you can probably swap with in equal amounts. Uh, az Azuril, Sentinel, Melanol, Adoxyl, Cascalone, uh, Algonone, um, all these different things that you can swap out in replace of Calone to see what kind of interesting effects. Because all of these different materials I just listed off, all while are the typical wet aquatic vibe, they all have different facets. While Calone is wet aquatic with a melony undertone, you can swap it out with say Ultrazer, which has a more bright citrusy vibe. You can swap it out with Algonone, which is a more of a algae kind of seaweed vibe. You can swap it out with Sentinel. I mean, the list goes on and on to swap that one material. Let me just put this back real quick. Uh, the next one looking at, uh, Floral Ozone. You could easily swap that out with something else. Um, floral Ozone, you could probably try something like Star Fluor, uh, which is kind of within the same vein. Uh, swap it out with equal amounts and see what that does. Uh, the only one I would not touch is the Heli Helinol. That one is a very, I would say a deep rooted embedded in this formula that you would not want to touch. If you swapped out helianol with something else, you're going to probably tip the scale and not get the same effect as what this original formula was intended to smell like. Uh, the next one, the spicy material, the single only spicy material in this formula, which is pink peppercorn uh, at roughly, you know, half a percent in the full formula. This is where, again, you can go nuts. You can try it with black pepper. See what that does. You can try it with something like Shiswan pepper. See what that does. And then there's also different other peppery like materials out there like poivrol. You can try it with that and see what that does. But try it with different spicy peppery materials. You can try it with, um, oh, what am I thinking of? Uh, I'm drawing a blank, so I'll just move on. But try it with other different spicy materials, but keep it within that same realm of five parts per thousand in the formula. Um, vanillin. It's, it's the only sweet material really listed in here. Again, try it with something like uh, isobutavan. Isobutavan is another sweet vanillin-like substance that isn't as powdery as vanillin, but it's a little bit more creamier. And you can probably swap out vanillin at two parts per thousand with two parts per thousand of isobutavan. See what that smells like. See if it smooths out the base a little bit once the dry down starts to get a little on the sweet side. Now the woods, the wood section is where you can really, really have fun because the woody materials, um, I would say are important in this formula. Isoe Super at 10.8%, don't touch it. Just keep it as is at 10.8%. Your said Ramber at 2.2%, don't touch it. Keep that at 2.2% and don't swap it with anything else because that is an important material in this formula. But what you can mess, uh, mess with, I would say the only thing that I would want to mess with this and this is the bactanol. 
because the bactanol is just a synthetic molecule that simulates a sandalwood like material and they have it roughly at one percent in the full formula and this is where you could have fun with different kinds of woods and seeing what that effect does to the overall composition and also in the in the dry down to the when you get to the the base notes so try instead of bactanol at one percent uh, try it with something like uh, Simrise makes something called Amberwood, which is a very dry, I mean, dry as you can think. Like, it almost smells like the wood is petrified. It's so dry and rock hard. Uh, but it has this slightly ambery quality, definitely woody. So swapping out Bactanol for Amberwood F by Simrise might be a good thing to play around with. You can switch back then all completely for a different sandalwood material. Try it with uh, Dreamwood Base by Furminich. See what that does because back then all and Dreamwood Base don't, to me, don't smell anything like each other. While yes, they are both sandalwood materials, Dreamwood Base is way nicer. Swap it out with that, see what it does. And then you can even get simple with it. You can try it with just your generic uh cedarwood essential oil try the different variations of cedarwood see what cedarwood atlas does then try another batch with cedarwood texas which is a completely different smelling cedarwood um, but yeah have fun try different woods um, and that's pretty much it so now that you've gone through and started playing with certain things try not to make too many changes at once like if you go through the entire list, let's say you make up this full formula as it was intended, the original formula, your baseline, and you make this. On your first batch that you do, only change one to two things at a time. If you go through and be like, I'm going to change this, I'm going to change that, I'm going to change this, you're, you're not going to get anywhere. Because when you smell it, comparison to your baseline, because you change so many things, you won't know what the hell you're smelling if something went wrong or something went right. If you only change just one to two things per, you know, per revision, you'll know exactly what it is you're smelling, what the differences, you know, the subtle changes that you made, if they are for the better or for the worse. If you go beyond one to two materials per change, you're just, you're really not helping yourself. You're not learning anything because now you don't know what just the effect was of switching out you know galbex with you know um with something like you know violif you won't know because you've changed like three or four other things that are kind of screwing with your your nose and the way that you perceive and smell things so only try to change one to two things at a time per revision so you know what you change so when you do smell the revision you know exactly what the subtle differences you should be picking up on. Um, and then the last thing with this, let's say you've made up this formula and you've made a couple tweaks and you're really digging it. You're like, I like where this is going. You can now at this point begin to add new materials if you feel like something is lacking. So looking at this, uh, in my opinion, I don't really see anything fruity in this at all. There's really not much of a fruity material listed in here. Um, so if you smell your finished perfume and you're done tweaking it and you're like, you know, it's just, it's missing something. Like at this point, you can now start to add new materials to this, but do so in very small amounts. And what I mean by small amounts, I mean, start with one to two parts per thousand in the formula. Uh, when you start to get a little bit too heavy handed, when you add in new amounts, you do what happens is you tip the scale, so to speak. It's like a, a, a figure of speech. You had this nice balanced perfume and then you add too much of one material and it just goes eh, and it falls flat and the perfume overall just kind of falls apart. So when you're adding new materials that were not there, do so in small amounts, one to two parts per thousand. So looking at this, if there's nothing, you know, like fruity sweet, uh, try something like, oh God, I don't know, fructone, uh, fructolate. Um, there's so many different fruity materials. You can try 
just looking at right here allele caproate or allele hexanoate which is like a pineapple scent you can start to now or even um what is it c not c14 there's a so-called aldehyde i think it's c10 well one of them smells like coconut maybe c16 i forget off the top of my head add just don't add all of these don't add you know the, your fructolate your c4 you know all, you know don't add it all at once one material at a time and that's it and do it at one to two parts per thousand so you're not tipping the scale and ruining your blend and it, when you ruin it it just becomes unbalanced and you will know when it becomes unbalanced um, start to test out different facets that are not found in here so if you feel like something's lacking something like it's lacking fruitiness well let me try some different fruity materials what, what kind of fruity material do i want i want to try pineapple well you can do you know buy you know pineapple you know from robert's at or robert Hay, uh makes a good pineapple base you can try allele caproate allele hexanoate you can try uh allele glycolate there's all these different pineapple like materials but only do that and add it in maybe you know two parts per thousand and just see what it does because you'll notice certain materials will be stronger than others um, so try it at low amounts first and if it's still you know make your blend with your new addition your new fruity material and be like smell it compare it to your baseline original one and be like do i smell the subtle nuance of this fruitiness that i was looking for and then you ask yourself is it a subtle fruitiness that i want did i accomplish that yes or no is it a more pronounced featured note like maybe you want that pineapple up front uh did i accomplish that yes or no if you didn't you know try it in four parts per thousand in the next batch but there's different fruits there's plum fruits strawberry fruits uh watermelon fruits all these different things that you can try for a fruitiness um there's other materials you can try like say uh the the big trend alongside with embroxin is things like amber extreme from iff uh ambrosinide uh all these strong woody ambers you can now start to test these by adding them in your blend again in small amounts don't go beyond you know one to two parts per thousand test them in small amounts see what it does if it's a good effect that you like keep it as is or continue adding more until you get the desired effect if it's something that you smell and you're like no that really isn't fitting the vibe pull it out and don't use it um, but that's pretty much it. Have fun. Add, you know, add some aromatic herbalness. You know, maybe you're like, this thing is missing some something herbal. Let me see what if I add two parts per thousand of just some, you know, sage. See what that does. Or maybe I want to try rosemary or something like that. Maybe if I want to put in some real lavender essential oil instead of relying on dehydromycinol, you know, linal acetates and things like that. Experiment at that point. But the key takeaway is always make the formula in this, in this example, make this formula as is the original formula and keep that as your baseline. So you can always compare and smell against the baseline, how it originally was intended to smell. But yeah, so that was it. Hopefully that wasn't too long of a video. And you know, you guys saw up in the, in the screen, you've got a formula that you can play with. It's a simple formula. There's not a lot going on in it. Um, but then I showed you a couple different tweaks that you can do to kind of play around with it to not only help you learn your materials, which is so important, because there's so many people out there now that are new in perfuming the perfumery and they're just like formula formula gimme gimme gimme. I want a formula, I want to make, I want to make a clone, I want to do this style, I want to make blue de Chanel just stop it just stop it stop copying people if anything use these formulas as a baseline and then start to to modify it and learn your materials so you can understand what the key components are what it's doing in that blend to give it that theme and then you can have fun with start swapping different materials to learn what these different materials facets are what they do to the blend so the next time you go to tackle your own perfume from scratch you can now grab your materials and know already you know what not only what it's going to smell like but 
you know, what material fits better in what perfume's theme, how, you know, rough estimates of how much should I add to fit this particular theme or what works, what doesn't work. And that's when you start to become your own perfumer. You're not just some clone hack that's gonna be just, you know, give me a formula, give me, give me, give me, I want a formula, I wanna, I wanna make the copy of this, a copy, just, you know, just stop it. You're, the best analogy of doing that is, let's say you take an art class and you're like, I wanna learn how to paint. I've never painted before, I wanna become a great painter. And if you go to an art class and tell the art teacher, you know what? Don't tell me how to use the brush or how, you know, what the different brushes do or what different canvases do. Just give me one of those paint by number palettes and I'll just paint over it and you tell me what colors to use. That's not learning. That's copying. You're not learning anything because the next time somebody's like, oh, you took six months of art classes. Well, paint me a mountain theme with a little deer in front of it. And you're gonna be like, well, I don't know how to do that because I only understood how to use the paint by numbers and somebody told me how much of this color to use and where to use it. You won't learn anything if you just do perfumery by just copying formulas. Learn your materials, and if it means taking demonstration formulas that are publicly available by perfume houses, by all means use them. But use them to your advantage to learn your materials. And that's pretty much all I could say about that. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys had fun looking at this test it, make many trial batches. I mean, if you come up with something great and you found out like a star material was like by swapping this with, you know, X material and it came out fantastic, you know, drop a comment down below. Let all the other viewers know what you're doing to, to mix things up in this formula to make it unique, different. Maybe you took it and completely took it out of the aquatic and into the you know, fougere section and it's made it something completely different. But yeah, drop comments down below and we could all learn together essentially. And that's, that's pretty much what this channel is all about, learning together, okay? So with that being said, until next time.